Hello, and welcome to this week's episode. Today we have something very exciting and slightly scary to talk about because I know how scared you all are of this crazy metal contraption. The vicious, the terrible, the oh-so-confusing thimble. Today, I'm going to talk to you and explain to you a good way to learn how to use a metal thimble. Just like me and Ma used to do. One of the things I hear the most from people when they see me sew with a thimble is they go, oh, I can never use a thimble. I've tried, I just can't do it. It just doesn't work for me. It's not comfortable. I can't hold the needle, blah, 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 blah. And I just kind of look at them because, well, one, I don't really ever know what to say to that because it's one of those weird compliments where you're like, <laughs> okay, I don't know what to say. I like turtles. But that's why I'm doing this video, because I realized if I do a video, then I can kind of, well, say what I, I always wanted to say. Most of us in the world today are not taught how to sew correctly. You're self-taught, right? You, you picked up a book, you watched some YouTube videos, you read a couple blogs if you're an elder millennial like I am. Yes, gather around the Snapchat, children! <laughs> and you just kind of went at it, which is awesome. Like, don't get me wrong, that's amazing. But we, as a collective unit of people, we weren't really taught how to hand sew. We were taught how to machine sew because that thing could kill you if it really wanted to. And so because of that, because of that lack of educational process has resulted in us as a collective unit of people and makers not necessarily always having the best technique. A thimble is a tool. It's just as much an important tool in your toolkit as your scissors, as your needles, as your thread. It is just as vital and just as important as anything else that you have in your sewing kit. But it is the most often overlooked and ignored and discarded piece in your sewing kit because people just haven't been taught how to use them. The reality is though is that we need them. If you're gonna do a lot of hand sewing, you need a thimble. You need it to protect your fingers. You need it to be able to stitch quickly and efficiently. It is, it is, it makes such a big difference in your sewing and that's when I when I hear people go oh I can't use a thimble I'm like you are totally cutting yourself off at the knees here right <laughs> right I'll do you for that you what come here what are you gonna do bleed on me oof you will pry this finger off my cold head this th th this finger you will pry this thimble off of my cold dead hands let's let's get right into it because I've been doing that YouTube thing where people do these massive ass long intros and that's completely beside the point. First things first, size. Your thimble size is determined by your finger size, just like a ring. Most thimbles that we have available to us today are not sized or they're very rudimentary in their sizes, like small, medium, and large. But when you look at antique thimbles, you're gonna see a little number on them. And that number can vary. I've seen anywhere between like four and 13. I know I would wager it probably goes down even smaller than four for children, but you know, just basic numerical sizes. Between that range, it's going to vary over how big and how long the thimbles are. So what you want in order to have a thimble that works works for you and your particular hand is you need to find a thimble that fits your fingers. The really, really teeny, teeny, weeny thimbles that are like, yeah, size four. It's not necessarily that people actually had hands this small. I mean, I know some adult women who did. Don't forget, children also were learning how to sew with thimbles. This size four thimble that was my great grandmother's, it's great, it's awesome, it's beautiful, it's super oldie timey, it's engraved with her name on it, I love it. I will never sew with this because it fits my pinky. I have to have a thimble that fits my finger. You cannot sew with a thimble that doesn't fit your finger. And I think a lot of people grab a thimble at like, you know, Joann's or somewhere and they put it on and it doesn't really fit. And so it's hard to use, is not flush with their finger and they can't use it for good reason. It doesn't fit them. So for example, this brass thimble is marked with a size eight. So this is a size eight thimble. That's actually a really common size for most adult women, but I don't have delicate baby hands. I have pretty, big hands. So it, it kind of fits, but I can't sew with this because I have several centimeters 
of space between my, where my finger ends and where the thimble actually ends because it's too narrow to go around my middle finger. So I have to have a thimble that fits. I wear a size 12 thimble. Um, if it's really, really hot outside and my hands are swollen, I will even go up to a 13. It goes almost to my knuckle, uh, my top knuckle, and it my finger actually is flush against the top of the thimble. So it becomes a part of my hand. I can do most anything with this on because one, it fits me. It's not flinging off anywhere. Two, it's flush to my finger. So this is what's important. It has to fit your hand. If it doesn't fit your hand, you're never going to use it because it doesn't fit. You can also have thimbles that are too big and then they'll fall off, you can't really get security. So having a thimble that fits is extremely important. What finger do you wear your thimble on? You wear it on your middle dominant hand. So if you're a right-handed person, you wear it on the middle finger on your right hand. If you're a left-handed person, you wear it on the middle finger of your left hand. You don't wear it on your index finger. The thimble is meant to push the needle through. Your middle finger is the one that pushes the needle through. So you need to wear your thimble on that finger. Wear the damn thing. Put it on and don't take it off. Rule number 76, no excuses, play like a champion. I wear mine when I go and get coffee. I've worn mine on the computer. I've worn mine eating food. I've even worn mine going to the bathroom, which is really awkward, but there we are. You just gotta wear it, okay? Just wear the thing and get used to it because once it becomes a part of your hand, then you can just move and go with it as much as you want. It's not a big deal. I will say, if you're into really long fingernails, this is not gonna work for you, okay? Like, I'm just gonna be really honest. The nail on my metal right hand, you can always tell if I've been sewing a lot or if I haven't been sewing by how long the nail is. This is a personal preference. I can't stand the feeling of a fingernail on a silver thimble. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. So I always like to keep that fingernail really, 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 really short. If you're really into long fingernails, unfortunately, this isn't really gonna work for you. And you might need to look into a tailor's thimble that is open at the top, so that way you can have your nails and so. This might be a little different for some of you, but basically what you want to do is you want to hold the needle between your thumb and your index finger. And I kind of end up hanging out around halfway through a little bit more towards the front and then giving yourself space for the thimble to rest on the back. And these grooves are going to catch the end of the needle, which is why they're there. And it'll help anchor it when you're pushing it through. Now you can use either the tip of your finger if you have a, a thimble like mine on, or you can use the side of your thimble to push it that way. So hold the needle like that and then either right there at the top or there at the side. And then your pinky out here ends up catching the, the thread and you use that as a way to control tension. Now I'm gonna actually just sew, I'm just gonna do some basic uh, running stitches into this fabric just to kind of give you all an idea of what this looks like. And I either hold my fabric between my index finger and my middle finger like this and use my thumb to control it, or I will do something like this. It kind of just depends on what I'm sewing and what my fatigue is like. And I also use my pinky and ring finger here to help hold the fabric, get tension, right? So we're just basting, see the fingers like this, and I'm using the thimble to push the needle through, right? And the idea here is that you're gonna want to help make fluid stitching motions. And the thimble pushes the needle through. And that's why we wear it on our middle finger.
might be asking yourself right now is, well, Abby, that's all well and good, and like, I'm super happy for you, and 10 points, but how do I know what size thimble I'm supposed to order? Because you know what size you wear, but what size do I wear? Because I don't have your hands. And it's a good question. Um, I've done some research online. Unfortunately, this is a part of the broader problem of just people not using thimbles and information not really being there that needs to be there. There are size gauges and ways to measure yourself for what size thimble you should need. And I have posted all that information in the description below. I'm not going to go into it because I think it's kind of long and boring and slightly redundant. My whole point is that you should just wear a thimble that fits you. Also, when it comes to purchasing thimbles, you can buy vintage ones, antique ones on Etsy or eBay. If it's any sort of seller worth their salt, they'll mark the sizes. I personally have found that the sizes on antique and vintage thimbles are basically the same as modern sized thimbles. So just kind of keep that in mind. Once you know you're a size 12, you're pretty much always gonna be a size 12 in metal thimbles. Now, as for modern silver thimbles, where I get them, you can just look up Simon's Co sterling silver thimbles and you will find retailers online that are selling sized silver thimbles at different price points. If you want the best deal though, I would definitely look at vintage stuff on Etsy and eBay. Modern thimbles are, can be a little bit pricey, especially if you're gonna get a sterling silver or gold one. All right, everyone, I hope this video has been helpful to you and has empowered you to try a metal thimble of your own. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. I hope you all enjoyed this episode because I love my thimble. I want you all to have the best sewing experience possible. I personally believe that it involves wearing a thimble. And until then, I will see you all next week. Bye. This is me doing a sound test. I'm pretty fun to do. No, that's super dorky. I'm not saying that. That's real dumb. Oh, wow, that wasn't English. Thimbles! An option, really. It, it, it's... Sweet. Wide variety of size. Ow. Okay, well, let's see how many times I buy my lip for the rest of this video. Wow, that's crazy. These are different. Not dominant. Submissive. That. Whatever. Uh.